Hello everybody, I uh, just want to do a review on my channel for the uh, Trailer Valet XL here. There's a ton of these videos out all over the place, a lot better reviews than the one that I'm going to do here, but those of you who are subscribed to my channel, you'll get a notification uh, that I'm doing this, and I'm pretty much doing it for my subscribers, so if you're along those lines, just follow along and I'll go over the features of this thing. If you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe and check out all the other how-to and interesting videos that I've got on all sorts of subjects. So the reason I'm doing this video is because I've gone through a couple of different ways of moving trailers. I've got three. I've got a, a boat trailer here that normally has about an 8,000 pound boat on it. And then a smaller utility trailer over there that's really light. And then my enclosed utility trailer that I use for motorcycles and so this one normally is about 8,000 pounds roughly with the boat on it maybe a little bit more and uh, the center one there is probably maybe a couple hundred or 300 pounds maybe 400 or 500 I don't know but it's light and then the uh, last one there with the motorcycles in it is probably it's rated at 3,500 but it's probably around 2,500 as it sits with everything in it so what I've been doing uh, when I don't use the truck is I modified this Harbor Freight um, dolly, trailer dolly here, and just used some flat steel bar and just kind of welded it up because the obviously the ball was too low for this one. And so I just raised it up a little bit and it works great. Um, without the boat, obviously it works great, uh, but I have to have somebody pushing the trailer to move it. And with these torsion axles, uh, it's almost impossible to turn much unless you're moving at a pretty good pace. So if I'm going to do a lot of moving, I just hook it up to the truck for uh, safety and ease. But uh, for this little trailer, the hand dolly works great. I can push it around by myself. This thing with the weight in it, there's no way I can do it by myself with that modified hand dolly. So the Trailer Valley XL is rated up to 10,000 pounds. And I think that's a bit of a stretch, but um, usable, I don't know. It's, it's definitely not 10,000 pounds. Um, the wheels, spin and uh, you you have to really have good tongue weight on this thing in order for it to actually work so if it's kind of an in-between trailer like this where you got 2500 to 3500 pounds and the tongue is fairly long you may not have enough tongue weight on this to keep it from spinning so i'll just go over some of the features just really quick um, you've got the the tiller basically which locks so this unlocks it this locks it and that's fully locked and that'll stop the wheels from moving you got the uh the low speed gear or drive high speed and then the coupler these are on amazon for about 750 for this unit i'll put a link in the description below um, the other options i looked at were up around $2,500 for a powered unit with bigger tires and a lot more stability. But I just wanted to try this first to see if it even worked. Uh, right here, you've got a detachable mount. Uh, right now I've got a two inch ball hooked up to it. The sleeve screws up to push this plate up against the bottom of this. And that's critical because if this thing tweaks a certain way and you don't have that solidly up against here, this will bend and you'll destroy your coupler. Um, but anyway, it's it's not that hard to hook up. Maybe it took me three minutes to do. And like I said, there's a ton of other videos you can watch on the setup and everything, but I'm just going over the features here for you. So because we're lightweight today, I just grabbed my 12 volt Milwaukee drill. You know, I'm a fan of Milwaukee if you've seen my channel and I've done all the reviews on their tools. Um, so first what I started off with is I, I need to move this trailer back and forth once in a while to make room for the other two trailers and I tried it on gravel here doesn't work at all this is flat and the tires just spin and dig into the gravel so if you've got gravel <coughs> this is not for you unless you use some plywood and I'll show you here 
in a minute how that works. But it's, it's kind of sketchy too. It actually started spinning. You can see there on the plywood, these tires don't grab evenly. And so you kind of have to push down on the tongue to get it to have any traction. So this thing does come with a hand crank and if you're doing real heavy loads, that's what they recommend using. I just have my little drill on there because it's a light trailer. Um, either side has the mounts for cranking and um, I'll just show you real quick how this thing moves. So we pull the handle up to unlock and we're going to go that way. Thanks. Oh. Yeah, that tire spin when you turn it so it doesn't turn very well and move back the other way tire spin again I'm just going to show you real quick what this thing does not do on gravel, and that would be moving at all. So you have to have a hard surface under those tires. They will not work on gravel whatsoever. Also, I guarantee that if it's a wet surface, if that wood was wet or you're on wet concrete and there's any kind of an incline or you're turning too sharp, there's no way you're gonna get traction with those. They were spinning on these dry pieces of plywood. Um, just today when I was trying to start this thing off. I'm going to do one more thing and it's going to be a simulation as if this trailer was on an incline and you're trying to back up. Um, you're going to see when you're using plywood what this thing does. The plywood would have to be secured to the ground. Uh, frankly I'm pretty sure it would slip but I'll show you what happens when you're on an incline in the gravel with the plywood. I'm just going to show you real quick how we take it off. Crank the trailer up. Screw this down so you can hook it up to the next one and then when you do hook it up you're going to crank this back up so this plate goes up against the bottom of the coupler. Alright so I did things a little bit out of order but now I'm going to show you how to put the attachment onto the uh, trailer and I'm going to use the little trailer here as an example for that. Two inch ball. This does come with a two inch, and it, you can also get the uh, two and uh, five sixteenths as well, but just something here. And then just tighten it up. This plate has to be flush on the bottom or you're going to damage your coupler. And you use this little spanner wrench that it comes with. So 
since this is so light, I'm just going to pick it up, put it on there. Normally, you'd crank it. So getting this thing to line up is a little bit tricky. I've seen some guys on YouTube, they'll hook this thing all up together and then um, just put the ball on top and you can do it that way too, but the way they recommend it is that. And then we just rotate. Rotate it till it lines up here. Put this pin on. And then, you've already got, just double check with your tight there. Right. Now I'm just going to use the hand crank on this one and we'll move this little trailer back a bit. And we're going to go on the higher speed. Oh, look. It just kind of slips because there's not enough tongue weight. So if you pull up on it, well, and it's a slight incline. Whoa. Okay, so you can see a little better now. You've got a, It's just a slight incline going up into some gravel and there's nothing behind the wheels. Now this thing's locked because the handle is tilted slightly down. If you pop it up, that unlocks it. But it naturally wants to fall, and that's a safety feature. It keeps the trailer from hitting you. Um, but trying to move this thing, you're going to get some slippage. It does work, but the lighter the tongue, the less traction you're going to get. And so this, I don't know, I'm kind of torn with this whole thing. I'm not sure how great it's going to be. Um, I do think that like positioning my boat out of the garage, just straight out to maybe work on the back of the boat will work well. If you just go in a straight line, you're on perfectly level concrete and you have high tongue weight. I think this thing's going to do what I want it to do for $750. I don't know. It depends on your budget. I don't know if it's worth it. I had a uh, little dolly built out of plywood, or not plywood, but wood and casters for my boat that I just pushed the boat out manually a couple of feet to work on the back, and then I would push it back in. Probably a lot less monkey motion than this, but this is definitely takes up less space. Here's the base of what I had under the boat trailer. There was another box part that I had on top of it, and then I would just crank the tongue down on top of that, and, and then I would roll the boat straight out of the garage a few feet just to, to work on the back of the boat, because it's only got like four inches on the back. But um, anyway, uh, if you're just moving stuff like this around, that hand dolly from Harbor Freight works great. Otherwise, you know, roll the dice on this thing. Amazon, you can pretty much return anything. So uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I hope this helps you decide. It's, it's not perfect, but it could be useful in certain situations. If this was all flat, perfectly flat concrete, I think it would help you to move a single axle trailer in tight spots to like if you wanted to turn it 90 degrees or whatever something you couldn't do with your truck i would say go for it but if you're trying to turn a double axle trailer in a tight spot good luck with that uh, with anything weighing more than probably 4,000 pounds i just don't think it's going to work i think you're going to get these tires when you turn i think you're going to see one of them pop up you can see this one already rotated up off the ground and so it's just not a real stable solution but your alternative is you know two or three thousand dollars or more to get another type of uh, motorized mover anyway hope that helped you today
make sure you subscribe check out all the other fun videos that i've done and uh see you in the next one